Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today. So I understand that a lot of schools are opening now and I was really thinking about how can we promote connections and continue the engagement and motivation while we're still physically distancing in the classroom situation. So I've got some ideas of um, icebreakers and just fun things that we can do to promote connection. So if you're interested, then please keep on watching. Okay, so my first one is about passing the wave or the dab. And I know that our students have a lot of kind of pop culture gestures, right, that have emerged from their generation. Generation Z, I think we're up to. And um, I know that the dab is probably so five years ago, but maybe you can ask your students to see whether they can pass any other um, gestures that they have now. I thought of passing the wave. So what you're going to do is you are going to wave or you're going to use the dab and then you're going to throw that dab over to another student and you're going to say their name so they know that they've received it. They catch the dab and then they're going to throw a dab to another student and say their name as well. And this can go around um, the whole classroom. Number two is about passing the hot potato. So I know that we can pretend to pass a ball, but I think sometimes it's really interesting if we, you know, have that visual imagery in our minds of a hot potato so that, you know, we've got to keep uh, bouncing it or we can't touch it for long periods of time. So having that hot potato and then passing the hot potato around the classroom and, and calling out that student's name each time you pass it. So number three and four are kind of really similar. Um, number three, I think I would suggest that you start off with. So I've done this with adults and I've also um, used this uh, game with students. And we start off passing the same sound first so that it's a little bit easier. Um, and then in number four, I ask students to start being creative and they have to pass a different sound. So for number three, if you're passing the same sound, maybe as the teacher you start so that you're modeling the whole process and you might pass a woohoo and then you call somebody's name and then they have to pass that woohoo around. Now if it's a different sound you might have woohoo and then you say the student's name and then the student might say yippee or some other sound and it actually is so much fun. I've done this so many times and we end up just in stitches of laughter because it's just so much fun with all the different noises that the students actually come up with. Okay, number five is teacher tag and students love this because I think they love the control element that they can come up with a question that they can ask everybody in the class. And I say to put it on a mini whiteboard, but if you don't have a mini whiteboard, um, an easy option is just to get a plastic folder with a piece of paper in it, could be colored or a white piece of paper and use whiteboard markers and tissues. So, you know, you've got this um, eco-friendly mini whiteboard and you're not wasting lots of bits of paper, but a student can start off with a question or you can start off with the question to model the a game first. And I suggest that you start off probably with boring closed questions just so that everyone gets the hang of it. But then you progress to questions that are a lot more open, that you can have a lot of different answers, lots of different interpretations and perspectives. And the student that is the teacher can ask different, like can look at the mini whiteboards and ask particular students for why they actually put that particular answer down. And you want the answers to be diverse. You don't want them to be closed questions that are either right and wrong. Now, six Pictionary, I think, is something that we've all played before at home with our families and our friends. And I think this is a great way, I think, to also help students understand concepts a lot better if they have to draw or act it out, because it means that they have to understand a, a different layer uh, to what just the vocabulary word is. Um, and so I suggest, again, I would probably model it first. Um, I would draw a picture of something and then have students trying to guess on their mini whiteboards what it is or ask a student to start off with a concept um, and you'd have to private message them, of course, in some way so that other students in the class didn't know what that concept was. And I think another way is to collect a whole lot of concepts from the students. So whatever unit you're actually working on, ask them to private message you either through email or through Zoom private chat um, or whatever means, because you are going to be physically in the room, but you can't, you've got to keep everyone health and safe, uh, safe. So you, you've got to physically distance yourself. 
And then you, as the teacher, can draw out different concepts and nominate different students to actually draw and act out that concept for the rest of the class. So lots of different ways that we can do Pictionary. Concept tag is a really interesting one, which is similar as well. The student starts off and thinks of a concept that is to do with the unit that they're doing, and they draw the picture, and then they have to nominate another student to draw another picture that's related to the concept. So they may not know what the concept is, but they look at the picture and then they have to draw. So it's a bit like Chinese whispers, but you're not whispering to each other. You're drawing a picture based on the pictures that you've seen before. Um, so that's quite fun, concept tag. And then complete the story. So this is something that I used to always do um, with my students where a student starts off with one word or phrase. It could be starting off with once upon a time. And then another student has to say a word or a phrase to that, that flows from that word or phrase from the student before. And then you keep going around. They nominate another student to go next by saying their name. And you end up, if you've got a class of 20 or 30, you've got a beautiful story. So I suggest that the teacher actually types and scribes the story so that we have this story. Story, and that's a lot of fun too. Now I know that you've probably got a lot of wonderful ideas so I'd love to hear them. Please put a comment in the section below if you've got some ideas of how we can still promote that connection and that rapport and you know build that relationship that we bring as teachers and as human beings um, while we still have to physically distance. So thank you so much for joining me again today and I really hope to see you next time. Bye!